The definition of artificial general intelligence is an autonomous system that surpasses human capabilities. Well, the videotape I'm about to play for you today, titled Rust in 100 Seconds, was generated entirely by AI, by combining tools like GPT-4, Puppeteer, voice cloning, and FFmpeg. But first, over the last week or so, people have been freaking out over these new self-prompting tools with long-term memory, like AutoGPT and Baby AGI. They work by taking a single objective from a human as a starting point, like build me a million dollar business. From there, it will build a task list and try to figure out how to achieve that objective, and it continues to prompt itself over and over again like a recursive function until the actual objective is met. Under the hood, they're using OpenAI's GPT models and also a vector database like PineconeDB to provide it with long-term memory so it can keep track of what it's been doing. And naturally, the first thing people do with tools like this is modify them to build things like Chaos GPT to establish global dominance, cause chaos and destruction, control humanity, and attain immortality. Sounds pretty crazy, so I tried these tools out for myself. And what I found they're most useful for is making my OpenAI API calls go burr. These projects are pretty fun, but nowhere near being true AGI. However, there are other efforts underway, like hugging GPT from Microsoft or Jarvis, which uses an LLM as a controller to interact with other AI models on Hugging Face to create a more general purpose AI tool. Then you have this new paper from Stanford and Google Research that just dropped, where they took 25 AI agents and put them in a simulated world, and they actually produced believable human behavior. In other words, they built the Sims. But all this got me thinking, if anyone's going to make me obsolete, it's going to be me. So I built my own auto GPT from scratch with an S tier programming language called JavaScript. It works by taking a video idea as an input, then uses GPT-4 to write a video script. That's no big deal, but here's where things get weird. It does a secondary prompt to figure out how to turn that script into an actual video. But to make a video, we need assets like images and code snippets, we need a voice to narrate it, and we need some kind of program to render an actual video. The first thing I did was give GPT-4 access to Puppeteer, a headless browser that's often used for web scraping. The video script contains a bunch of code snippets, and for each one of them I used Puppeteer to go to a site called Ray.so to generate a PNG for the code. But a video with only code would be kind of boring, so I also used a secondary prompt with GPT-4 to identify any people or logos in the script and then return a link to an image on the internet for that graphic, which could then be downloaded and written to the file system. In addition, to create a Fireship video, you're also going to need some animated GIFs, but for that I was able to use the Giphy API directly by having GPT figure out what to search for with my API key. I performed this part in a bunch of small steps, allowing each part of the script to correspond to a visual asset. That's pretty cool, but we still don't have anyone to narrate the video. Well, last weekend on Twitter, this guy created a program where you can link a YouTube video, and it will instantly clone that YouTuber's voice. So I'll go ahead and give a demo by grabbing the Neurosity Fireship video, and then just putting it into this site. Hi, my name is Aleem, and I like pancakes. That's wild! That's exactly like him! Okay. Pretty crazy that's even possible, and it might be illegal, but the magic is made possible by an API called Eleven Labs. I went ahead and signed up, and cloned my voice using about two and a half hours of recordings. Look at me. I am the captain of the fire ship now. The quality is decent, but it could still be a lot better. Now we can loop over every script file and make an API call to Eleven Labs to generate the voice and then save it as a WAV file. And at this point, we have all the assets necessary to edit a banger video. Now initially, I attempted to have GPT-4 write its own FFmpeg script to edit the video all by itself every time. It did actually work sometimes, but for the most part wasn't very reliable. We don't really need GPT for this part anyway, so I wrote some of my own code with Fluent FFmpeg to loop over the assets and combine them all together into a single video. And without further ado, here's the final result for your viewing pleasure. Rust explained in 100 seconds. Rust is a programming language that was created by Graydon Hoare, who started working on it in 2006. Rust was designed to be a safe, concurrent, and fast language. 1. Ownership and borrowing. Rust introduces a unique ownership system to manage memory without garbage collection. Each value in Rust has a single owner, and once the owner goes out of scope, the value is automatically deallocated. 2. Functions and pattern matching. Functions are declared with the FN keyword, and Rust supports pattern matching with the match keyword. That video only took AI about 30 seconds to create, and had I not put Made by AI in the corner, you guys would have never known the difference. At this point, I haven't released the code publicly due to fears about the impact this would have on humanity. But the good news is that now that I've been flawlessly cloned by AI, I can finally stop making AI videos and focus entirely on new Angular content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.